Ben here. In my last two videos, we've talked about atomic orbitals. Today, we're going to go a bit further and we're going to introduce the concept of molecular orbitals and simulate a molecule of dihydrogen. I'm just going to jump straight in and I'll finish up with a longer explanation. I'll be using Orca, IQMOL and JMOL in this video, so if you want to follow along, pause now and make sure both pieces of software are installed. Start by making yourself a new directory in which to run this calculation. And then open up IQMOL. If you're not familiar with IQMOL, I recommend you check out my other video where I demonstrate how to use it effectively. But just for today, with this spanner tool selected, click on the carbon and then click the hydrogen. And this means that we're in build mode and we'll be placing hydrogen atoms. If we left click in this blue area, we will place our first atom. And then if we click on the atom and drag, we will place another atom which has a chemical bond to the first hydrogen atom. We then click this minimize energy button and that puts the bond in an approximately low energy state. And then if we go to build and symmetrize molecule, it will place the molecule in the center of the 3D space, which minimizes the cost of the calculation. Then go to file and save as. We'll navigate to the directory where we're doing the calculation. We'll call it something appropriate. And then we'll save the .xyz file. We can close IQMOL now, and we'll see that the file is in the directory we made. Next, we need to open up Notepad, or whichever text editor you prefer. And we're going to quickly write the orca input file. So we start off by declaring a functional we'll be using, which is the PBE0. We'll then declare what we wanted to do, which is to optimize the structure. And then finally, we'll state the coordinates using XYZ file, zero and one, indicating that it is not a charged molecule and that there are no unpaired electrons because we're not expecting any unpaired electrons. And then we'll give the name of the file. We'll then save this. We'll navigate to the directory that we're doing the calculation in and we'll call it dihydrogen.inp and we'll make sure not to save it as a text file. If we then hit save and close this, we'll see that we have our .imp file and our .xyz file. Now to actually run the optimization, we'll type cmd in this address bar, open up the command line, make sure we're in the appropriate directory, and simply type orca dihydrogen.imp greater than dihydrogen.out. This should only take a few seconds to run because a dihydrogen molecule is very, very simple. So we'll just let that calculation go. If we look in the directory, we'll see that some temporary files have been made out. And there we go. The calculation's finished in a matter of seconds. So we'll just have a quick look in the dot out file to confirm that everything is as we're expecting. If we scroll to the bottom, it states that orca terminated normally and says how long it took this calculation to do. The section of this file that we're interested in for the purposes of today is the orbital energies section. So if we'll have a look here, and we can see that there is a series of orbitals that have been generated, and one of them holds two electrons. Now let's visualize these, and we'll also take a note of the energy so that we can make sense of what's gone on here. So I'm going to have a look at the first two orbitals here, and you'll understand why in just a moment. To visualize them, we type orca.plot. We want dihydrogen.gbw, and we want the interactive menu. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, this should be quite familiar. Um, this is the interactive orca plot system. So we need to change two things here because we're plotting molecular orbitals. First off, we need to enter the number of orbital to plot, and it's already looking for MO0, so that's fine. And then we need to change the file format. So if we change that to uh, a 3D Gaussian cube file by entering five to select the output file format and then selecting number seven for the format number, then when we hit 10 and enter to generate the plot, we will see up here that we have made the dihydrogen molecular orbital number zero. We'll also plot molecular orbital number one 
and now we can exit the program and close the command line. We can also close this .out file. So we're just going to have a quick look at the orbitals that we've generated here. And to do that, we're going to open up JML. So to look at the orbital, we're going to start out by selecting the XYZ file and dragging it into JML. And here we'll see the two atoms of hydrogen. To visualize the orbitals, as in my previous video, all we have to do is select this .cube file and drag it in. If we then go to Tools and Surface Tool, we can select Isosurface 1 and view Ghost on, and we can have a look at how this orbital looks. I'm going to go into more detail on this towards the end of the video, but first let's have a look at what the next orbital up looks like. So if we'll click and drag that in, again go to Surface Tool, make sure the Ghost is on, and we can have a look at how this looks there. To understand what's going on here, start by imagining two individual hydrogen atoms. If the two hydrogen atoms approach each other, the two occupied atomic orbitals will begin to overlap. If you put two atomic orbitals in, you get two molecular orbitals out. One of the molecular orbitals can be thought of as the result of the two atomic orbitals combining. This combination has increased electron density between the atoms, which decreases repulsion between the two hydrogen nuclei and therefore contributes towards the atoms being bound together. We call this a bonding orbital and label it with the Greek label sigma to show it arises from s orbitals. The second resulting molecular orbital can be thought of as the atomic orbitals cancelling out and has no electron density between the atoms. This reduces electron density between the nuclei and is referred to as an antibonding orbital. We give it the sigma star label to indicate an antibonding molecular orbital with s contribution. In the output files for our calculations, we can find the energies of these orbitals. Let's compare the energies of all of these orbitals and construct what's called a molecular orbital diagram. We'll start by looking at the individual atoms. Orca calculates that the atomic orbital energy is just below minus 9 electron volts. We'll put one arrow in each orbital to show that each atom of hydrogen is contributing one electron. We then place the molecular orbitals for the dihydrogen atom that we've calculated using Orca in between the atomic orbitals to indicate that the two atomic orbitals combine to form the resulting molecular orbitals. The bonding molecular orbital is almost three electron volts lower in energy than the initial atomic orbitals. The antibonding molecular orbital is over 11 electron volts higher in energy than the atomic orbitals. We can now place the electrons in the molecular orbitals starting from the lowest energy and building up, according to the Aufbau principle, link in the description. As each orbital can hold two electrons, shown as arrows, we can see that the electrons held in the bonding orbital of the hydrogen molecule are lower in energy than the single electrons in hydrogen atomic s orbitals. This is why we see hydrogen forming H2 molecules, because H2 is lower in energy than two separate hydrogen molecules. So there we have molecular orbital theory. Atomic orbitals combine to form orbitals which are spread over multiple atoms, with electrons spread out across a molecule. I hope you found this an interesting and useful introduction to the topic. If you've got any questions, I'd love it if you leave them in the comments, and subscribe for more chemistry you can do using your home computer. Till next time!